This is the second part of the lesson on coordination compounds where I try to explain the hybridization of coordination compounds and predict their magnetic behavior based on the electronic configuration of the central atoms. The first example that I'm going to take is potassium hexacyano ferrate 2. In today's lesson, we will name the complex compound, explain the shape of the complex, explain the hybridization of the complex, explain the magnetic property of the complex, and illustrate the use of spectrochemical series in predicting the magnetic property. K4, FeC, and 6. As we already know, the first part is potassium, which is positive. The complex part is negative, therefore we have to name that second. Before naming it, we have to determine the oxidation number of Fe. There are four potassium, oxidation number of sodium of potassium is plus one. The oxidation number of Fe is X. There are six cyano groups. The oxidation number is minus one, therefore four into plus one plus X plus 6 into minus 1 is 0. So 4 plus x minus 6 is equals to 0. x minus 2 is equals to 0 or x is equals to plus 2. The oxidation number of Fe is plus 2. Therefore the name changes into potassium hexacyano ferrate 2. The name ends in ATE because Fe is coming in the coordination sphere of a negative complex ion. Whenever the, com whenever the complex ion is negatively charged, the metal name ends in ATE. Hence, potassium hexacyanoferrate 2. The next thing we'll do is we will write the electronic configuration of Fe. Atomic number is 26. Therefore, the electronic configuration of Fe is 1s2, 2s2. 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d6. So this is based on the off-bar order where the orbitals are written in the increasing order of energy. Now we have to write the electronic configuration of Fe2+, which means we have to take away two electrons. The question is, will we take away the electron from the 3d or 4s? So if you look at the orbital approach to the structure of atom based on the Bohr model, the first energy level or n is equals to 1, we have the s orbital. When n is equals to 2, we have the s and the p orbital. When n is equals to 3, we have s, p and d. And when n is equals to 4, we have the s, p, d and f. So while looking at the electronic configuration of Fe, we find that the 4s four, four is having lower energy than 3D. Therefore, we write that before 3D. But in reality, the 4S is the outermost electron if you look at the atom. So the S orbital in the four principal quantum number 4 level makes the outermost electron to be 4S2 electrons. So whenever we take away electrons from a transition metals, we can access the outermost electron. In this case, it is 4S. Therefore, when you write the electronic configuration for Fe2+, the 2s electrons would have been lost. So it becomes argon followed by 4s0, 3d6. And this is how we can represent the electrons in the different orbitals. Now, for the sake of hybridization, we are going to reposition the orbitals. The s orbital is going to be written along with the 4p so that the physical presence of the orbitals are going to be indicated here so that it becomes easy for the process of hybridization. So now the new configuration we have 3d6 with the 6 electrons, 4s with 0 electrons, 4p with the 0 electrons. So now, whenever a coordination compound is formed, since the ligand donates a pair of electrons, 
or both electrons come from a single atom or molecule. The process of hybridization involves the mixing up of atomic empty orbitals. So we have to generate empty orbitals equal to the number of bonds that can be formed. In K4, Fe, C and 6, the coordination number is 6. Therefore, we have to form a molecule with 6 bonds or 6 coordinate covalent bonds. So again, we have the same case here where the 4s, 4p and 4d is there. At the same time, we can have a change happening in the electronic configuration depending upon the ligand. So, since the ligand used in this complex is Cn- is a strong field ligand, there will be a spin pairing as strong field ligands always forms low spin complexes. What it means? When a Cn- is bonding with a metal, the Cn- being a strong field lig ligand will force the unpaired electrons to pair up. That's what it means by saying it's a strong field ligand. The number of electrons that are unpaired will decrease or we would say it has low spin complexes. This is a spectrochemical series O2, I, it's arranged like this and if you look at the position of Cn is almost at the right end or close to the strong ligands. So the ability of ligands or strong ligands is that they can force the unpaired electrons to pair up and in this case the Cn- minus is actually a strong field ligand. It will force the four unpaired electrons in the 3D6 to undergo pairing. When that happens this is the new configuration that you will have after spin pairing has taken place. Now there are two empty d orbitals that is coming from the 3D. So we have two d orbitals from the 3D, one s orbital from the 4s, three p orbitals belonging to the 4p level. Now like I stated earlier we need to have a six empty orbitals to form six bonds because the molecule has is having a coordination number of six. So the 3D, 4S and 4P orbitals undergo mixing or hybridization and make available six empty orbitals that are equivalent in size, shape and energy which is the basic definition for hybridization mixing up of atomic orbitals of comparable energy to form new hybrid orbitals that are equivalent in size, shape and energy. So now you have a D2 sp3 hybridization here. The D2 sp3 hybridization once it takes place has six empty orbitals into which the lone pairs of six Cn groups can be coordinated. Here the value of x represents the two electrons that are coming from this ligand. So there are six of them. They are donated into the D2sp3 hybrid orbital forming D2sp3 hybridization. So we can explain the formation of the octahedral complex by hybridization. In this case, the d orbital that has taken part in hybridization comes from the third energy level and the s and the p orbital belong to the fourth energy level. So when you write the hybridization, we prefer to write it as d2 sp3, implying that the d orbital is an inner d orbital that is taking part in the hybridization. On the other hand, if the 4s and 4p and the outer d, d orbital had taken part in hybridization, then it would have been written as sp3d2. Both the molecules would still have the same geometry or it would have been an octahedral geometry where the bond angles would have been 90. Here the d2 sp3 merely indicates it's the inner d orbital or the 3d orbital, lower energy d orbital that is taking part in the process of hybridization. Now we will see how they are arranged in space to form the octahedral complex.
a lone pair of electron from each of these sino groups, the square planar part, two bonds, one above and one beneath it, making it an oct octahedral complex with bond angle 90 degrees in all of these cases. Four faces on top, four faces in the bottom, makes it octahedral complex. The bond angle is 90 degrees and this is how we can explain the geometry of K4, Fe, C and 6 or rather we are looking at the hybridization of Fe in K4, Fe, C and 6 which has a coordination number of 6. We already know that if the coordination number is 6 the molecule has to be octahedral. If the coordination number is 4 there are two possibilities. One is sp3 hybridization, the other is dsp2 hybridization. So in that case we will either get a square planar complex or a tetrahedral complex. Now let's predict the magnetic property of K4, Fe, C and 6. If you look at the electronic configuration of Fe2+, when the complex has formed, because the Cn group is a strong field ligand, it has paired up all the electrons and there are no unpaired electrons present in Fe. Therefore, the molecule will not exhibit any magnetic behavior. And if you calculate the magnetic behavior using the equation mu is equals to root of n into n plus 2, where n represents the number of unpaired electrons, you get a value of 0. So we can safely say that this molecule is not paramagnetic. Here are a few examples for you to practice. The first one is Na4FeF6, very similar to K4FeCN6 with the difference that the Cn is replaced by F, which is a weak field lig a ligand. So you may want to watch out for spin pairing or the lack of spin pairing when this complex is formed and that changes the magnetic property. Again K2NiCN4, a similar situation. You have a strong field ligand. We had seen its impact on the spin pairing in transition metals. I'm going to work out NiCl4 or Na2NiCl4 just to show you how we can apply the same concepts that we had seen earlier. Sodium tetrachloronicolate 2. Again, nicolate because the complex is negatively charged. Oxidation number is 2. This is just to show you how you calculate the oxidation number. The oxidation number of nickel is plus 2 and the complex is a negative complex. So we will name sodium first, tetrachloro. When chlorine comes within the coordination sphere, the ending is O, therefore tetrachloro nicolate because the complex is a negatively charged complex and the oxidation number is 2. Electronic configuration of nickel. Nickel atomic number is 28 therefore the first line represents the electronic configuration of atomic nickel before it undergoes ionization. Then we have the electronic configuration of Ni2 positive like I said earlier in the previous case 4s2 3d8. 4s is actually the orbital that is outside. Therefore, the s orbital electrons are removed. So the configuration for Ni2 plus would be argon followed by is 4s0, 3d8. So the fourth energy level is actually present after the 3d. Therefore, the, for the sake of hybridization, we are going to switch positions and then perform hybridization. Since the ligand used in this case is Cl- is a weak field ligand, there will be no spin pairing as weak field ligands always forms high spin complexes because they are incapable of pairing the unpaired electrons. So in the 3d8 configuration, you will find that there are two unpaired electrons. And the Cl- which is forming a molecule with four bonds can either form an sp3 hybrid orbital or it can form a dsp2 hybrid orbital. Since the Cl is a weak field ligand, 
it will not allow spin pairing. There is no spin pairing here. So there will be two unpaired electrons present in the d orbital. But still the molecule uh, has to form a complex where it needs four empty orbitals which comes from the 4s orbital and the 4p undergoing sp3 hybridization. So once sp3 hybridization has taken place the s orbital and p orbital undergoes mixing again by definition mixing up of atomic orbitals of comparable energy to form new hybrid orbitals which are equivalent in all ways. That's what you have here. Now you have to add the four Cl minus atoms that you have. Each of those Cl minus which is a ligand which is capable of donating a pair of electrons will fill the sp3 hybrid orbital to form a tetrahedral complex because the hybridization is sp3. Now if you look at the electronic configuration of nickel or Ni2+, plus, there are two unpaired electrons. Therefore, the presence of the two unpaired electrons can make the molecule paramagnetic. So that's a tetrahedral molecule and the bond angle is 109 degrees in 28 minutes or 109.5 degrees. We can explain the hybridization of nickel in Na2 and ICl4. The magnetic property of Na2 and ICl4, since we already have seen that there are two unpaired electrons in the 3D level, there was no spin pairing because the d orbital, the Cl minus is a weak field ligand. Therefore, the molecule will exhibit paramagnetic behavior. And this is totally possible only because Cl minus is taken as a ligand. On the other hand, if we use Cn minus, there would have been spin pairing and the shape of the molecule would have been different. So work out on the examples that I've given you to see the difference. You can, uh, you can use this concept to explain octahedral complexes, tetrahedral complexes or square planar complexes and predict their magnetic behavior. But you will need to have the spectroschemical series as a reference in order to do that or it will be a good idea to memorize those values. Now calculating the magnetic moment there are two unpaired electrons, therefore mu is equal to root of n into n plus 2, mu is equal to root of 2 into 2 plus 2, which makes mu is equal to root 8. Root 8 is 2.828 and the unit is Bohr magneton. So this is in accordance with the observation. We study the magnetic behavior, measure it using an instrument to measure the magnetic moment. And you'll find that the magnetic moment calculated is around 2.828 Bohr magneton. This completes the lesson on coordination of compounds. There are two parts to it. The first part, the video has already been posted. This is the second part of the lesson.